Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come with me. The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and a magical maestro, at your service. Jackson, Jackson. Hello, Milton. Oh, oh it's you, Jackson. Mm. You gave me a real scare sneaking up on me like that, you little oh. scallywag. Oh dear. Well, well, what I was going to say was, uh, did you see the masks that the children made today? Uh, I'm going to check them out. Maybe we can use one of them in a story. Oh, you do that whilst I find jelly. OK. Ah! Oh. 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 oh, Milton, it's you. Oh, you scared me. I, I thought there was a monster in here or something. No, no, it's nothing like that, my little jelly bean. Mm. It's just that everyone keeps making me jump. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, of course, the masks. They're really great. Uh, come and have a look. Oh, yes. Actually, before we do, mm. perhaps we could use that one to make a monster story. Oh, Milton, I hope it's not a scary story. Me neither. Mm. Now, this is where we need your help to get the machine going. Join in with the magic words. Imagine. 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 Imagine a story! Oh, look, Milton, it's a playbook. It's called The Sand Monster. Yusuf and Lamise were in the car with their dad. He was driving them to the seaside for the day. They had brought lots of toys to play with on the beach. Yusuf and the Mies ran onto the beach while Dad was left to carry everything by himself. He kept dropping things in the sand. Dad sat down and started to read his book whilst the children played. Watch out for the sand monster! Dad said from behind his book. The sand monster? Yusuf and the Mies looked at each other. They looked all around, but there was no sign of any monsters. So they carried on playing with the football and ran around in circles on the sand. They buried their feet and then wiggled their toes until they popped through the sand. After a while, they asked Dad to come and play with them. But Dad was still reading his book. Have you seen the sand monster yet? Yusuf and Lamis laughed. There was no such thing as a sand monster. Why don't you go and play with your buckets and spades, said Dad. So Yusuf and Lamis got busy. They built a sand castle. But it fell down. They dug a big hole to sit in and pretended it was a car. Then Yusuf had an idea. They looked over at Dad. He had fallen asleep. Yusuf and Lamise took their spades and started to dig. It was a big job, but somebody had to do it. 
When they had finished, they sat back and admired their work. They were very pleased. They had made a huge pile of sand. Suddenly, Dad woke up with a start. Something felt very strange. Dad realized he was underneath a huge pile of sand. Yusuf and Lamise had buried him up to his neck. They thought Dad looked very funny. Dad could hardly move. Yusuf and Lamise laughed and laughed. All of a sudden, Dad roared like a big sand monster and chased them along the beach. There was a sand monster after all. It was Dad. <laughs> you were right, Jackson. Hmm? These masks really are great. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just look at that green one. Hmm. He's got a carrot in his mouth. Oh, Jelly, that is his <laughs> tongue, not a carrot. <laughs> oh, I wish I could make a mask. A we really are... scary one. I'm not sure what those two are up to. But in the meantime, what say we make a story? An exotic tale from a faraway place, say. Um... India. Now, what do you think we should use to make a story? Ah, I know. What do you think this is? It's a sweet, succulent, juicy mango. Mmm, my favourite. Into the machine it goes. Are you ready to help? Imagine, imagine, imagine the story! Aha! It's a tale from far away. And it's called The Crocodile and the Monkey. The monkey was happy as usual. She was looking forward to eating her favourite fruit. Yum! Mangoes! I love mangoes! Juicy, fruity, squishy, squashy. Only three steps. One, two, three. From this riverbank to the rock. And then up to the tree. The crocodile watched the monkey eating her mangoes. He was tired of eating fish and wanted to have the monkey for his dinner. He watched as the monkey jumped off the tree onto the rock and then back onto her own side of the river. Then he had a brilliant idea. I'll curl myself over the rock and pretend to be the stone myself, he giggled. And when the monkey tries to jump on me, snap, I shall catch her in my jaws. Next morning, Monkey appeared and got ready to jump across the river for her breakfast. She was just about to jump when she noticed something strange about the stone. The rock looks a little bit different today, she thought. Is it my imagination or has it become bigger? <laughs> she laughed to herself. I bet it's that crafty crocodile up to his old tricks again, she said. I'll soon find out if I'm right or not. Morning, rock, she cried. How are you this lovely day? The crocodile was confused. Ah, do Rock speak? He thought. I'm not sure. Rock, said the clever monkey, what is wrong with you today? Are you ill? I've never known you to be quiet before. Crocodile decided to speak. I'm feeling fine, he said. Come and jump on me and I'll feel even better. What, into your jaws? So it is you, crocodile. As if you could outwit me. Stick to your fish and forget about trying to catch the clever creatures. The crocodile was so angry that he began to swing towards the bank where the monkey was standing. But with a one, two, three, she was soon on the other bank eating her mangoes. She was much too clever for the foolish crocodile. One day I'll catch that cheeky monkey. As he slinked off. Mm. Bee. Fai, foo, fum, I smell the blood of a meal join. <laughs> oh, my great aunt Ermintilda, it's a giant. Fee, fai, foo, fum. <laughs> don't worry, Jelly, I'll save you. Oh, please, Mr. Giant, don't eat me or my friend Jelly. No, 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 mm. Milton, it's all right, it's only Jackson. <laughs> is it? Yes. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> what a Fabulous disguise, you young rapscallion. It is, isn't it, Milton? Milton, Milton, can we make a story about giants? Oh, yes, you could use my monster mask. Yes. Very well. Mm. <laughs> One giant story coming up. 
Are you ready with the special ingredient? Imagine, imagine, imagine the story. It's a blue cow story. And it's called Blue Cow and the Giant. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking at the tops of the trees. I wonder what it would be like to be tall as a tree. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a place where people are very tall, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a place where giants live. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she saw an enormous pair of shoes. She could hardly believe her eyes. Each shoe was the same size as Blue Cow. Hello. Blue Cow looked up and saw the largest girl she'd ever seen. She was as tall as the trees. Her hair streamed down like spaghetti and she had a big smiley face. I'm Valerie, said the giant. Do you want to play hide and seek? Hello, I'm Blue Cow. I'd love to play. You hide first and I'll count to ten. One, two... Blue Cow counted as Valerie crashed around looking for a hiding place. Ten, coming! shouted Blue Cow and she opened her eyes. To be honest, Valerie was so large it was very easy to see where she was hiding. There you are! cried Blue Cow. Behind the tree! <laughs> People always find me because I'm so tall. I'd like to be tall. But that's easily done. Here we go. And Valerie lifted Blue Cow up and placed her on top of the tree. Now you're as tall as I am, said Valerie. Oh, everything looks so small from up here, said Blue Cow. Oh, uh, I'm really very, very high up. She wobbled as she swayed back and forth. Um, do you think you could put me down now, please? Of course, said Valerie, and she put her back on the ground. Did you like being tall? Hmm? Uh, yes, thank you. But I think I'm happier being closer to the ground. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I have been in Meta Giant. Everyone knows there aren't such things as giants. But we know there are, don't we? Wow, well, she was tall but very friendly, wasn't yes. she? Like me. <laughs> Look. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. Bye, story makers. See you again soon.